It's, it's just a big mess, but, you know, thank God Rhonda, Rhonda and maybe some other people will come and explain this like it is, you know. But like I said, I don't hold my tongue back on John Lord Knight as one of the worst pieces of shit on this planet. And, uh, you know, they can do whatever they want to do to me. I, I, I don't have you can sue me all you want to and then you're going to get but some holla, holla, holla. Did an interview with um, Mike Rotunda the other day about his whole upcoming Hall of Fame induction. Yeah. And it turned into a whole thing about his son, Bray Wyatt. By the end of it, he was he was broken up and crying. And it was it was very humbling that just the way he just the way everybody felt about his son. So, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, that his son is well respected by a lot of the guys oh yeah man i i knew that 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 young man when he was a baby did you they brought him to the arenas in florida and they had michael tell you this they had a rock wilder dog and that dog would always come and watch bray and that bray didn't have to do nothing bray sat down beside rotunda's bag and that dog stayed right with him and nobody never touched him Wow, that's great. So we're talking about, you know, we're on the air right now. I see you're recording. Yeah, I already hit the record button. You're right. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I think that's a great story for us here on the Time Machine. We're talking about uh, uh, Bray Wyatt because that documentary um, is going to be on Peacock, or it might be by the time you're watching this. And uh, his dad, Mike Rotunda, told me that he saw the final cut along with the family, and it was an emotional roller coaster so to say and it was perfectly perfectly done well he uh and and bray always was a good after he grew up and he got into the business and me and him really you know became friends because i used to tell him stories when he's like a little boy and uh he always took care of me in a lot of ways people didn't know it but he did a promo one night and he said something to the guy and he says let me holler at you player and the next and i saw him at the tv and he told me hey i'm i I look out for it. You know what I mean? So that's when you know, you know, you got a friend somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And now, Bill, you you mentioned uh, his father. You did have an interview that you did with him. Will we be seeing that soon? Uh, oh, well, well, depending upon when this is run, you know, sometimes uh, our wrestle binge gets so crowded with material, you know, where uh, we, we've got to find a place. But yeah, that will be uh, an interview um, talking about Mike Rotunda's. Um, Hall of Fame induction along with uh, Barry Windham as the uh, U.S. Uh, Express. And it turned into us talking about uh, his son, Bray Wyatt. Yeah. yeah. Very so close I'm looking to forward to, to be, be, be on that. Be on the lookout for it. It'll be coming soon. Just keep your eye out for it if it's not already out already. Can I take one more side road here before sure. we get into our actual Yes, your format? show, Bill. Just do whatever you no, want. No, 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 no. I'm asking a question. Here. I rarely plug any wrestling books because everybody's bitter. And they, all the books are, oh, they treated me badly. I got a, a, a book called The Six Pack by Brad Bocaccian. I think that's, well, I can't pronounce his last name. What's interesting about this, he has, he went and talked to about six different wrestlers, uh, Tony Atlas, uh, Iron Sheik, um, uh, didn't talk to Hulk Hogan, uh, didn't talk to Vince McMahon, but the chapters are the real Tony Atlas versus <laughs> the character Tony Atlas, the real Iron Sheik and the character Iron Sheik. And he breaks this thing into how the uh, the real person rises to the top. And and Teddy, I know you know Tony Atlas. Uh, it was one of the most moving chapters I've, where Tony, you know, took him all over where he grew up and everything. It's a, just a, a great read. So if you're looking for an intelligent read, the six pack, very intelligent writing. Very cool. Right. Folks, because we haven't said it yet already, yeah. welcome to the Wrestling Time Machine by Sports Kita. <laughs> I'm your host, Mac Davis, along with my WWE Hall of Famer co-host, Mr. Teddy Long, and of course, our <laughs> pro wrestling journalist, Mr. Bill After. Hey, guys. Thank you. Sure. Look here. Uh, I want to hop right into things for a second here. Ronda Rousey has been making uh, quite a stir uh, lately and uh, has been making some headlines with her new book, Our Fight. 
Now she's promoting this book and in the midst of promoting her book, she also talks about what it was like behind the scenes in WWE. She says at one point, quote, it's hard sometimes to know where the evil, unethical, slime ball character of Vince McMahon played out for the cameras ends and where the actual questionability, uh, questionably ethical, many times sued and multiple times accused of sexual misconduct, Vince McMahon begins. I'm saying it's hard to tell the difference between the two. She even went on to say that Bray Wyatt even tried to warn her about the, you know, the machine itself, saying no matter how nice they are, no matter what they say or how they act, they're always just going to be using us for pieces of meat. Get in, make your money, and get out. That was the words of Bray Wyatt. God John- rest his soul. God rest his soul. The man told the truth. You know, and a we lot were, of people before, before you know he passed on. Man, God rest his soul, because it's nothing but the truth. Yes, and uh, speaking of John Laurinaitis, she didn't have kind words for him either. She said he looked and acted like an entitled sixty-year-old former frat boy, whereas Triple H looked for talent and potential in NXT prospects. It appeared John Laurinaitis looked for ability. Sorry, guys. Well, so what are you sorry for? This, come on, man. Yeah, you know, I, but I, you know, I'm just too sorry for the language. Um, no, don't worry about the language. Okay, <laughs> come on. This is real, man. But you know, for, you know, for me, um, I'm glad to see her come out and say these things and, sp- and speak loudly, too, because uh, she's not hiding from these comments whatsoever. Uh, and, you know, she, and you know why she's not hiding from them? Because she's telling the truth. Teddy, uh, do you expect we'll see much more of these type of things come out of the woodwork when it comes to Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and and even Bruce Pritchard? She even, you know, she went after him saying, uh, basically, they can go F themselves. Well, Ronda Rousey probably knows more than a lot of us, okay? Because she was there. Uh, You know, I I have to say something, too, uh, about her. and 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 after she come out with these comments, now I can understand. Because when I first met her and started seeing her around, you know, I, I just, you know, she's a nice person, but there was just something to me about her that she really didn't give a shit about this business. And uh, it just, I don't know, maybe I had that wrong, but now maybe I understand why, you know, why she had that attitude. Because sometimes I could see it in her promos, you know, that I saw more anger than I did the promo. You know, she, you have to know how to look for these things, and you have to be around Bill will tell you for a long, long time in this business, you can pick it up, especially if you know what you're doing, okay, if you're smart. Uh, and so uh, now I understand the anger. Um, like I said, man, this is it's just a big mess, but, you know, thank God Ronda, Ronda and maybe some other people will come and explain this like it is, you know, but like I said, I don't hold my tongue back on John Laura Knight as one of the worst pieces of shit on this planet. And, uh, you know, they can do whatever they want to do to me. I, I, I don't have, you can sue me all you want to, and then you're going to get but some holla, holla, holla. So uh, that, that's all I can tell you, man. Here's a man, you know, and, I, and like I said, I'm not going to bring them through with this, but here's a man that's going to stop me from making a living because of the color of my skin, not because I wasn't doing my job. So you're going to tell me I did my job to face of that TV for nine years and you <laughs> you don't, you, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So let me, let me stop. Teddy, did you, did you ever talk to uh, Animal Joe? Lord yes, me about, and him, no, Animal about, was, Animal about, was, no, about his brother. About no, no, life. you can't do that, Bill. I Come on. Uh, no, I was wondering. But you can't, you look at, well, think about this, Bill. Hear me, okay. this black guy running up to this white guy named Animal talking about him to his, about his white brother. Okay, <laughs> no. come on, Bill, stop okay. it. You know, the one thing that makes me uh, concerned is when you start seeing the names like Ronda Rousey who are willing to speak out because they had the clout and they probably weren't approached in the way uh, that many other female stars may have been approached. I wonder how many of those stories we have not heard from women yeah. who just never said a single word. And that's, that's you know, it's just like your race, Teddy. It's gender, too. Here is somebody who's just looking for employees based on if they can get a piece of their ass. And that's it. And that's all they cared about. 
things like that are not fair in this business. It's way wrong. And that type of thing needs to stop in this business. I do believe that since we've seen several people leave the WWE, that that area is cleaning up and that environment is becoming more inviting now than it used to be. So let's hope that that remains to stay on the same road uh, as we go. Well, that's, else? That, that's what I wanted to say too, man. You know, I, I hate to even start talking about this mess. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, we, we, I think what we need to do is put it put it to rest, leave it to the courts, let them decide on what's going to happen, what's the future of these uh, of these people. And uh, we just need to move on, man. But it's good that we kind of know what's going on. And, you know, it's, I guess, whatever Hunter would always say, is good for business. <laughs> and, you, and you probably won't hear many people talking about this subject too much longer because now the hot topic is Diddy. Uh, now that his homes have been uh, just invaded and they, they've taken the stuff out, man, that's a wild story. If you haven't heard about that, watch that somewhere. But uh, Diddy is it's like watching a wrestling program with the news that I've been seeing about him. I, I think that I think that a lot of what's going on, like the Ronda Rousey thing and all that, I think there will be more people once they're divorced from WWE coming out with those kind yes. of stories because not only to clean up what people think of the company but it's also you know money for books like that when you do an expose book about a company that you worked for that's been in the public eye for so many years a tell-all book is going to sell a lot oh yeah of course and that's the that's the point of it all it's business